It's hot and humid under the noonday sun. We are here standing in front of this old closed up house next to another wooden house on stilts. Although we have come on a weekend getaway, this is certainly not your average tourist destination. Our guide, Lao Sek Hong, is very sure that there is something interesting we can see here. Papan is a one street town with less than a thousand people. They are mostly Chinese, and in fact, the name Papan comes from the Chinese word Gapan, which means first wood. This was a lumber turned mining town, and during its heydays, the Chinese and Malays worked very well together. The Malays felled the Chengang trees, and the Chinese would saw them into planks. Fair enough. So, with much anticipation, we waited for a story to be told. They call this house Ruma Basar Raja Bila. Some locals call this house the castle of the Mandailings in Papan Perak. Who's this guy we asked ourselves? Apparently he was like some big time real estate agent from mining land in Papan and Gopeng during the 19th century. It was also the time that the gangs of that era, they called themselves the Gihins and Haisans I think, they were massacring each other over pretty much everything. The Chinese here are mostly Hakkas, they usually worked in the tin mines. Here at the home of Ng Sao and Wa Sun Po, we have a spread of traditionally home cooked Hakka dishes for lunch. Timber and tin ore were not the only stuff that carved the name in the history of Papan. There was this very brave woman, Sibyl Kartigesu, and her doctor husband, who did lots to help the people during the Second World War. Sik Hong has reconstructed this house cum clinic that she used to live in at number 74 Main Road into some sort of gallery to honor Why her. Why she do that? Because she was so brave. She risked life to listen to the radio. She kept an illegal, illegally she kept a radio. And at that time, keeping a radio without Japanese knowing it is death sentence. Chuchu. Do whatever. Coming back from Papan and after spending two hours here, I've experienced a lot. Firstly, I've eaten the food here, Hokkien, Tahaka food, which is really, really authentic, traditional food passed down from generations. And I've also visited one of the most amazing places with Sibyl Katigasu, who is who she actually helped a lot of Malayan people. After experiencing so much, I think this place has a lot to tell, Papan. And even though streets look empty, I think it still has, it holds its, it holds its place in history. In Papan, with its haunting quietness, surrounded by forested hills and abandoned tin mines, history stands still. We were promised more stories to be told in nearby Gopeng town. Bet you don't know how Goping or Moping in Chinese got its name. Well, there are a few assumptions. One has it that the early Chinese who came to Goping wore plates or pigtails. But when they arrived here, they decided to cut them off. So they became Moping, which means no plates in Hakka. Then the other assumption is that a man named Moping was ordered by Sultan Jafar to open up mines here. So it was called Moping. 
Our first stop to find out what makes up the rest of Moping is the Goping History Gallery on Jalan Yu Kong. What's really interesting about this place is that the famous Chinese pharmacy, Yu Yan Sang, was born here. It was started by this guy, Yu Kong. I'm at this historical gallery in the heart of Koping. There are artifacts and photographs here that depict the era. As you can see, this is the dulang, and then you can have the measuring machine to weigh the tin. What the community wanted to achieve with this historical gallery is to educate the new generation about the history of Koping, to let them know what happened here back in those days. Koping used to be the largest tin mining industry in the world. Today, many youngsters from this town has left the country and what the community hopes to achieve with this gallery is to revive the old town and to attract back youngsters from all over Malaysia. From the gallery, we took the Goping Heritage Walk around the town and up the hill. The trail took us past so many landmarks, such as an old soy sauce factory, schools, markets, and a Chinese temple. They all have stories to tell. So we checked out the Chinese Opera House. Wow, this is like so So even the, yeah, not English. So we have to start here. So this is the date show. Um, yeah, the first day show is Hosi Taiwan. Huh? Um, then before that, they will have the Tai Fung Xiao. Goping isn't all about heritage and old buildings. There's a wild side to it that's gained popularity among tourists. We headed uphill to Adeline's Resort, an eco lodge set within the forestry hill. On arrival, Sheila tells us we are in luck. The Rafflesia is in bloom, and tomorrow we trek into the forest to see the largest flower in the world before it fades away. <laughs> <laughs> 